Alrighty, good afternoon everyone. My name is Thorsten and I'm a product manager at Snowflake. In my talk today, I wanna to walk you through a few new capabilities in Snowflake and explain a little bit more how they rely on FoundationDB. Given the limited time, I had to be quite selective, so I just picked my most favorite new capability in Snowflake and um, I'll walk you through that. Um, a quick architecture slide uh, as a lead-in. For those that are not familiar with Snowflake, this is from a 30,000-foot perspective. The architecture that Snowflake uses, you can see the clear separation between storage um, at the bottom and then compute at the top. And uh, customer query processing, data processing, all happens in the virtual warehouses that you see in the middle. And the storage and the compute, they scale completely independent uh, of one another. So you can have a very, very huge data set in storage. You only pay for the storage. And then, uh, then you can put uh, as much compute on top of it as you need at any given point in time. That can be very small, for instance, during the weekends, but it can be massive during a regular work, uh, work week where you're running, for instance, your data science workloads. At the top of that sits, uh, let's say, the brain uh, that, that stitches all of this uh, together. This is where metadata management, transaction management, security, um, and uh, query optimization all happen. Uh, most of these tasks rely heavily on FDB because the complete system state for Snowflake, all of our metadata is, uh, uh, is stored in, uh, in FDB. So uh, let's zoom into one of the features and uh, try to understand a little bit more what it means to, uh, to add a feature to Snowflake and what's the impact for FDB. The one that I picked is uh, what we launched earlier this year at our summit conference under the umbrella of data pipelines. Then the scenario uh, here is, um, particularly with IoT scenarios, mobile applications, um, sensor applications, you have data that's constantly born, and uh, this can be websites, devices, uh, mobile phones, um, the data either comes to a messaging system such as Kafka or it's stored somewhere in, uh, in the public cloud. And from there, what customers usually do is they load that either in, uh, in batch or through some of our continuous load functionality into what we call a staging table. The staging table is essentially an append-only table that keeps track of all the changes that are happening at the source systems. Um, and then what customers want to do is they want to inspect the net new changes that came into the staging table and then figure out what are the changes that they need to apply to the actual business tables that are being uh, used by analysts or business users. Um, and those are these transformations that you see in the middle here. Those can be simple merge statements in Snowflake SQL, but they can also be more complex stored procedures that have um, really rich business logic in them. The challenge here is you wanna uh, run these transformations automatically, ideally every time when new changes are landing in your staging table, you wanna reliably figure out what those changes are, send them through your business logic, through your transformations, and then apply the resulting changes to the target tables that you see on the right-hand side in this picture here. In order to support this use case, we introduced two new concepts to Snowflake. One is what we call a table change stream. It gives you the ability to run a SQL statement against the, 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 the change stream to figure out what changes, what net new changes have happened to the underlying staging table since the last time that I ran this, uh, this statement. This is typically used in what we call a task. A task is the ability to schedule a piece of SQL that could be that merge statement or a call to a stored procedure. Um, and the SQL code in these tasks usually then refers to a stream to figure out what are the changes uh, that have happened to the staging table, then apply the business logic to it, and then persist the, resu the results of that into the target tables. Now, all this scheduling, all this state management for these tasks is happening uh, through FDB. So we keep the metadata, obviously, for uh, the, the task definitions in FDB, but also the queue management for what's the next task that needs to run the scheduling, all of this is done uh, through FDB that you see at the bottom here. So I wanna walk you through a quick demo of this. Um, so here, we're connected to uh, a, a Snowflake account. Uh, let's start by creating a staging table for a customer scenario. Here is my staging table for the customer. Customer ID, name, date, and a zip code. Now let's create the target table here. Um, again, called customer ID, name, date, and the zip code. Now let's pretend that a change is happening to the staging table, and let's insert a new row to um, the staging table here. 
And let's see when that finishes. Not sure why not. There we go. All right, so let's take a look at the staging table. Let's move this up a little bit. So here you can see, this is our staging table. We have a new event that Snowflake moved in at zip code 401. Um, but if we look at the actual customer table, it's still empty. So that change record has not been picked up from the staging table yet. It has not been processed yet. So here comes a merge statement um, that implements the, 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 the change processing. And it does two things. So first, it checks whether there is already a customer record in the target table. If so, then it will just apply an update with the new values to that table. If there is no record for this customer in the target table, then it will run an insertion. You can see that here in the uh, when matched clause, we are doing the update. And in the not matched clause, we are running the insert. So let's run this merge statement over um, the, uh, the, the change that we have in the staging table. And now you can see there is Snowflake at zip code 401 as it is in our staging table. Now, I ran this merge statement manually just to illustrate the processing that we want to happen. Now let's automate this using streams and tasks. Uh, let me first clean up my staging table here. And then the first step typically is to create a stream over the staging table. That gives me the ability to incrementally look for changes that are happening to our staging table. So now let's add a change record into the staging table. Let's say that Snowflake moves from zip code 401 to 402, which we actually did. Um, and you can see that change here in the staging table but it's not yet processed for the actual target table. So it's still sitting there. And remember, we haven't defined any tasks to do that. But let's take a look at the stream. So here is the stream object. It tells us there is a record sitting in the staging table ready to be picked up, and it's due to an insertion that happened to the staging table. So now let's define a task that runs every minute in a given uh, Snowflake warehouse. And the body of the task is the merge statement that we looked at earlier. So this essentially means this task wakes up once every minute and is looking for changes to the staging table through the lens of the stream and then running the merge logic on top of it. So let's get this task created and let's kick it off with a task resume statement. Here is the task. And we can look at the task history. And the task history is essentially a look into, um, into uh, FDB metadata, uh, which gives me visibility into the queue, which changes or which task executions have been scheduled in the past, were they successful or not, what were the error codes that we have hit along the way, and what are the scheduled tasks that are uh, subject to execution next. And you can see here that in about half a minute, the next incarnation of that task is supposed to run. And until that point in time, we should see the old zip code in, in our customer table. And we should still see the change record in our stream. So let's uh, wait for a few more seconds um, and look at some of our adoption data before I jump back. So here you can see the number of task executions on a daily basis plotted over a timeline. And you can see that we are uh, now well above one and a half million task executions uh, every day. Um, imagine that all of those task executions trigger in the order of 10, uh, maybe a few dozen FTP transactions, each of them. So there is a substan substantial additional load to it. And you can see that one of our customers went super crazy creating tasks. Um, we obviously found that out and we were talking to, to them and we found an easier way to implement their particular use case, so that's why you're seeing us coming back to uh, the, that regular hockey stick trajectory that we're, uh, that we're on. Just wanted to show you that real quick. Now let's jump back into the demo here, and let's take a look at our target table. And you can see now the zip code has changed to 402, so our task has probably run. Let's also take a look at our stream. And here you see the stream is empty. So we have picked up the change from the stream and folded it forward into the target table. And let me also run the history statement here again. Um, and if we scroll down, you can see uh, our successful execution 
down here, and you can see the, uh, the next one is scheduled for um, about a minute um, out from now. With that, let me jump to my last slide here and show you my shameless plug. So uh, um, as always, we are looking for great engineers. We have uh, offices in San Mateo, California, in Bellevue, Washington, and in Berlin, Germany. If any of these items that you see up here sound remotely interesting to you, then we'd love to chat. So we're working in all sorts of interesting spaces from core data warehousing to data lakes and data pipelines, as you just saw. And last but not least, FDB. With that, thank you very much and have a great day.